Testing one, two, three. Testing one, two, three. Testing. Hello there, Brave Hearts, Urbanites, and Coach Mad Hatters. And welcome to the fourth installment of the Keynotes to Self Tipping of the Hourglass series. This is our final installment. And so I figured I'd do a few things that makes this moment with us very special. So I pulled two cards from the Numinous Astro deck to help just bring in a more enlightened context around the conclusion of this series. Now for me, in real time, it was stretched out longer than I had initially anticipated. But as I say with any installment, when I actually get a chance to hit the record button, I am glad to finally be here because there'll be so much going and ebbing and flowing and, and interconnecting um, inside of real time that honestly, when we set out to do something, we really do not know what the outcome is going to be. And this is regardless of how clad iron the plan is especially for those that have given in to the devotion to allow moment by moment the divine to have its way and that we serve first and foremost as the observer and then the conductor even if it's within a simultaneous role. We're just inside the role of the conductor. We have saved space for the divine to intervene. And so quite honestly, just a few days ago, I wasn't even sure if I was going to at any uh, point in the immediate future finish this series. And what's been quite interesting is that that's the way it has been with any series that I have uploaded onto this channel. It starts out one thing and it evolves and blossoms into something else. So here we are. And when this series first started, even the way that the cards laid out, was phenomenal to me. It was something that I had never seen before. And I have logged in at this point, many hours of what I like to call my um, treasure, my, my tarot treasure trove tutors. So I sit in front of many tarot readers um, on YouTube, especially, um, uh, those that focus on uh, the language of love and the individuation process and professional development. So I really hang with the, I mean, um, personal development. I really hang with the uh, the personal developers and coaches that just happen to speak the language of tarot versus you just and I and not I was gonna say merely reading tarot because that's a, a that's a that's a phenomenon in itself but I seem to be attracted more so to those that use it as a tool to help folks reclaim their relationship with self. So many times I'll say, I don't read for divination purposes. And here lately, I've been thinking about that. I've been thinking, just thinking about that as a personal sentiment. Because at the end of the day, we refer to the cards so that we can have clarity and a better understanding. Um, 
But I do feel uh, still relatively solid in the angle that I don't read to foretell the future. I don't even read to foretell fortune. And so with that said, I, before I tell you what the two cards from the Numinous deck is, I'm going to open up this session with a quote by G.W.F. Hegel inside of the Phenomenology of Spirit. And this is in gratitude to Matt Siegel, who is, I believe, I'm, I hope I'm pronouncing his last name correctly, Becca Tarnas's husband, uh, both of them, I have learned a great deal from uh, with regards to their individuation process and their own relationship with self and the courage that they have to step in to these discovery quests where they are tapping into, they are um, querying, if, if I may, the numinous elements of life, the unknown, the great unknown, the wild unknown. And they step in front of certain mysteries and do diligently unpack things. And so reading one of Matt's papers that he posted, I want to say earlier today, if I'm not mistaken, I have to once again apologize for my uh, consciousness around time because I know that I am in the eye of many time loops. There's certain things that's going on with my, my own individual sensation of time. And I know that it's also... Uh, attached to my Capricorn sun and all that is going on with Saturn and the hosting of Stellium and all this other good stuff, as well as my Pluto being in the first house. So there's a lot of transformation and a lot of weightiness and a lot of shifting and churning and processing. And so there's a lot of things going on inside this mind and heart of mine. <laughs> that I do have to frequently remind myself of this reality's time and space. All of that to say, I'm quite sure that Matt posted this earlier today. If it was not, it was yesterday. I know it's been within my bubble of 48 hours. So here's the quote. The life of God and divine wisdom can be spoken of as love disporting with itself. But this idea falls into edification and even sinks into, and I always want to call this serendipity, but it's the opposite of, <laughs> I'm going to spell it, I-N-S-I-P-I-D-I-T-Y. Hold on, you all know how I do. So let's just go ahead on and give way to the space. So let's see. S-I-P-I-D. Okay, so is it going to allow me to pronounce it? <laughs> if you've if you've hung out with me enough that you already know how I do, so please forgive me. Okay, so let's say it. Insipidity. Insipidity. I-N-S-I-P-I-D-I-T-Y. Insipidity, which means drab or boring. So, 
even sinks into insipidity if it lacks the seriousness, the suffering, the patience, and the labor of the negative. And I felt that to be so directly related to the fourth installment of this series, mainly because we constantly find ourselves needing to balance, to wholeheartedly balance what we would consider positive and negative remembering that it is subjective. What I may find positive, you may find negative. And the spiral goes around and around. Inside of this, having the respect of just that smidget of sentiment gives us more leverage than I believe we honestly know what to do with. Why? Because At the forefront of any conversation, you have already suspended judgment knowing that there is a another angle that is just as quote unquote righteous as your angle, just as worthy of respect and reciprocity as the angle from which you see things. There is, and, and, and rightfully so, another angle that tells another truth that is indeed just as worthy as yours. Balancing that out keeps us right in the center without straying too far from the left or the right, the front or the back, literally holding space to toggle and ebb and flow as the energies and the influences show up. So the cards were laid out in an hourglass fashion, as far as I'm concerned, but it was literally in a clockwise. That's the way that I decided to read them Um, But it still had more of a diamond shape to it, which um, I will time stamp the photo of the card layout prior to um, my coming on so that you may refer to it often enough to understand the positioning of the cards by which I speak. So, situated at the top of the time, as I'm just going to call it, at the top of the hourglass is death. So I decided to say that that is in the high noon position. And if you know anything about the symbology of high noon, then you know that it's a very important, very um, concentrated moment of reconcilable energy. And that at high noon is when the sun is the most highest and things are the most illuminated. And so we are able to see clearer and in more vibrant hue, whatever it is that the sun touches. It's at its highest. With death being in that position in conjunction to its full meaning inside of the tarot language, It does not mean death as we are socially conditioned to refer to it as, but it honestly means transformation. It honestly gives depiction to that which I like to call the Phoenix mode, that 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 key moment where the Phoenix version one smolters down into ashes and immediately blazes up a, a version two. So it's just like that. The, it's, it's that, the, yeah. And <laughs> sometimes I get tongue tied with even thinking about the richness inside the seconds, like within a minute. And I think it's less than that. Uh, if I associate it with any 
uh, example that I've seen depicted regarding the process. So it's like flame on, smolder out, new being. <laughs> So inside of that very precious time loop, very small, very significant time loop, newness is born, newness emerges. The facilitation of this series allows me into the affirmations and confirmations that we are in Phoenix mode as a collective. Version one is dying out while simultaneously version two is being emerged. Now, even though this is a very short period from version one to version two, so much is taking place. So from death at the top of the hourglass, to the Ten of Swords at the bottom of the hourglass, there's much that will be considered, that could be considered negative, that must be dealt with, that must be confronted and reconciled. Whatever that may mean to you as an individual, as well as your immediate collective, which then spins out into the greater collective. You your inner court, your outer court, and then the greater court. But right after the Ten of Swords is the Three of Cups. And that assures me, affirms me, confirms me to say that love is waiting for you. All this love is waiting for you. So inside the Numinous Astro deck, two cards popped out and it is the 10th house surrounding reputation and the 8th house surrounding intimacy. Now remember, I'm going according to the Numinous Astro deck and that is what is on the cards. Um, each house has its own card. And so those are the two cards that came out that will be in conjunction as we move through and consider this fourth installment. And inside the fourth installment, we will be talking about the, the King of Pentacles, the Ace of Swords, and the Justice, which is directly after the Three of Cups. So looking at the spread, it allows me to see the probability of at the bottom of the hour, at its darkest, the Ten of Swords may seem like there's nothing on the other side of it, but it's the Ten. So it's going to automatically reset. It's going to automatically hop into version two of the Phoenix. And so inside of the, those immediate moments of newness, the Three of Cups awaits. There's love. And let me just real quick so that I can maintain the continuity. Three of Cups, sharing, team spirit, friendship, unconditional love, something coming to fruition, high spirits, abundance of energy. And then on into the King of Pentacles, which is ultimate fulfillment, financial security, a life of luxury, determination, and stability. And I often say, when I think of luxury or riches or wealth or things that have anything to do with financial currency, I automatically refer to it 
from the non-physical space into the physical space. And so riches and wealth associated with man-made monies isn't always the way I view it. To me, wealth and riches is in the form of enlightenment and wisdom, consciousness. The elevation of one's consciousness to me is just as significant as the elevation of dollars in someone's physical bank account. And so right on the other side of the Three of Cups, the, the King of Pentacles showing up tells me that there's an energy that is waiting once we deal with all of the weighty, negative, unruly type shit that there is, in fact, a diary of enlightenment that awaits those that are traveling this intellectual and emotional journey, especially those that are inside of the individuation process. And if you hear me shuffling, I decided to uh, see if a angels and ancestors oracle uh, card will pop out while I um, am on my soapbox. <laughs> while we unpack and talk out some things. <laughs> so the next card is the Ace of Swords. And so let's just get right with its meaning. Um, triumph, justice, victory, honesty, using your intellect, seeing through illusions, resolving a situation, gaining a clear understanding, doing what's right. The Ace of Swords is one of my favorite cards um, in the deck. And I think I've made mention before um, that even though in our birth charts, all four elementals are represented, there is usually a combination of concentration. And so I have a high concentration of earth, wind, and fire in my birth chart, which allows me to understand that any wa any elements associated with water is where I will bring completion into my life, where my my moments of wholeness emerges. So it's one of the reasons why I do diligently, very consciously be around water signs. I am also one that will situate fire signs and some have been situated without my doing um, but others have been uh, purposely positioned where they are so when I see the ace of swords it always lets me know that I have passion on my side and that I am a flamethrower. And when you have one that has the ability to tangle with fire, you have very keen, very precise awareness because you can't fuck around playing with fire. You, you, I, I've never seen one. <laughs> I've never seen an instance where someone who decided to. Now, I know that might sound like risky business, um, especially to the more conservative folks. To be around fire signs is risky business because I always say, if you do not handle a fire sign with care, you will, yeah, you'll fuck around and get burnt. <laughs> Just the respect of the property itself is in order. <laughs> so, when it comes to the Ace of Swords, there's air that the, the, the air element makes me think of my fire, my, my components of fire, and then how I purposely bring in the water 
And then I understand that when the energy of the Ace of Swords comes into play, that it's like my wand. It's, it's, it's like my conductor's wand where I am now able to direct and situate. Now, trust me when I tell you, this is still very new to me. Um, even just standing in the ownership of such capabilities is still very new to me. Understanding the elementals and how uh, the cards show up um, to indicate that they are at attendance, ready and willing for uh, engagement and participation. is still a relatively new language that I am speaking. So, before I get to the card that just popped out, the last card in the center of the hourglass is Justice. Major Arcana. And the Justice card is our reminder of balance through logic justice and fairness, responsibility, and correcting wrongs. Um, any type of course correction or any type of the attempts to undo what has been done or to correct what is seemingly wrong once again, we are in subjective territory and it would do us good to pay attention to our honest expressions around certain things. Um, and I feel led to point that out specifically because of the insight that I'm gathering around just because I feel you were wrong does not mean you were wrong. It does, it does not mean that you were existentially wrong. And when one is traveling certain paths to, to better get to know oneself, that's the barometer by which you ought to judge your right and wrongs. Justice comes in the form of true authentic expression. For me to figure that your morals are the same as my morals, if we just take a moment and analyze the objectivities between the master mentality and the slave mentality, you could easily see that morality is subjective. It's a state of mind and axiology. It's what's valued. And justice is a very flexible thing. And I know that may seem a little weird. Um, and quite honestly, I am, uh, I am maneuvering lightly through this. Because it is a very tender, it's a very tender, very tender, very tender. <laughs> it's a very tender transparency, very tender. Um, so, <laughs> ah, look at that. Okay, so the Oracle card that comes out is the Air Guardian. Shift your perception. And it makes me feel assured when it happens like this because it goes along with the Ace of Swords. It goes along with the fact that the powers of the Air Guardian is here to help us shift our perceptions. 
And I'm delighted in myself because I'm not waiting until I have it all together. I'm not waiting until I have mastered the art of communication or even have fortified my ability to interpret. I'm literally bringing you along with me as I learn it. So even, okay, so we have another card come out. So even, <laughs> okay, star ancestor, follow the voice of your soul. And I'm going to tap into the book to elaborate in just a minute, but I'm, I'm on a roll now. So I'm just going to continue shuffling as I speak. <laughs> oh, oh, okay. All right. Well, let me slow up then because two more cards then popped out. Um, so it's the moon. Take note of intuitive messages and mountains. Stand your ground. So um, I am standing inside of this bubble of vulnerability because mainly if you know anything about the essence of having a Virgo moon as well as a Virgo ascending, I am always in tug of war with this thing called perfection. And for so long, I would just sit on the sidelines or blend into the background, figuring that I wasn't fully prepared or I didn't know enough to stand in front and, and speak just the smidgen of truth that I had that I wanted the entire quilt to be completed before I would begin to present. One of my more greater challenges in the last 18 months has been to speak up regardless, that there will be times when I am gonna misspeak or I am not gonna be completely clear. And one of the things that I've had to own up to is that even when I transcend out of this embodiment, I will not be an individual that knows it all. There is no way for me to know it all. And if I wait until I figure that I'm in a place, a place to speak, I'll never speak. But I am every single day being provoked and, and, and jolted and, and being hunched or nudged to speak about something, to begin sharing all of the things that I've been studying and discovering and interpreting. And that has, that which has been revealing itself to me. And it's like in my mind, it's nudging. All right, coach, get up there and talk about it. Let's, let's bring it forward. Like it literally is going to be a patchwork type of scenario. Like this video is going to link onto this video and this understanding and comprehension is going to latch on to this one and that at no point will you ever have it all. Why? Because inside of this time and space, things are constantly evolving and changing and switching and ebbing and flowing. So what will be true and factual today as things go on in a couple of tomorrows, it may be something totally different altogether, which means you must stay fluid in how you comprehend things. There is no longer the time where things are written in stone. Things are shifting and transforming all day, all night, twice on Sundays. And be flexible for that. Like begin to soften up your perceptions and, and, and acknowledge that there is room for catalytic. Is that a word? Catalytic. Is that word? Is that a word? Catastrophic <laughs> change. And it's all okay. It's all okay. So, <laughs> with all of that said, we are going to tap in real quick with a, a spotlight on the 10th house of reputation and the 8th house of intimacy from the Numinous Astro deck inside of the guidebook. So, the 
and I'm I'm reading it tenth house, a house because that's the way it came out. So tenth house reputation. Wow. Okay. And remember, this is a new deck, so I am still learning much of it. So tenth house reputation. Sign is Capricorn. Planet is Saturn. Element is Earth, and it is represented inside of the tarot through the two, three, and four of pentacles. The 10th house is both boardroom and podium. <laughs> the place where we strive to make our mark on the world and where we look for respect and admiration in the eyes of others. Sitting opposite the homey fourth house is part of our Sitting opposite the homey fourth house. This part of our chart shows the quality of our public life, the, na the nature of our ambitions, and the ways in which we go about achieving them. Ruler of our reputation, the 10th house holds clues to our profession and responsibilities we wield. Housing our relationship to the patriarchy and authority figures. This is also the seat of our political learnings. It shows our affiliation with the establishment, in quotes, quote unquote, the establishment and the rules that we know and the rules that we Oh, that's interesting. I thought it said no. No, it doesn't. And the rules that we kowtow to. <laughs> interesting. The tenth, When this card is pulled, the 10th house is asking you to trust in your own self-sufficiency. What would it take for you to believe that you truly have got this and that nothing and no one can take away the wisdom gained from the life skills you have mastered? Anywhere there is self-doubt, Remember that you are the CEO of your own life and that you get to call the shots. Feel free to consult with your personal board of directors, which is your family, your friends, your mentors, your teachers. But ultimately, it's your prerogative to make whatever decisions are in service of taking whatever next steps is most aligned with your sole purpose. And so the journal prompt is write a list of guidelines and best practices for brand me, M-E, brand me. That's interesting. And, and what's even more um, rewarding is that I did not pre-read these sections before I start recording. I was in the midst of meditation I pulled out the cards that was associated with this segment and then I pulled those two cards and literally the ancestors and oracle of uh, the ancestors and the angels and ancestors oracle cards was right in real time while I was already recording. So I right now feel that the majority of this segment is for me. <laughs> directly related to what's been going down in my last four or five days. And I'm going to close out with a very special story um, that chimes in with a recording that I um, uploaded yesterday with regards to the now catchy term in entanglement <laughs> and, but this time I will be speaking from an astrological standpoint <laughs> I gave Will and Jay today moment inside that Lewis segment now I am going to um, dial back and, and focus on the stuff that makes me glow <laughs> team last dragon <laughs> so um, okay so the eighth house is Intimacy, sign Scorpio, planet Pluto, element water, tarot card associations is the five, six, and seven of cups. Look at that. And I had been 
and probably will until the end of the year, really being free with my expressions around my Pluto being in the first house. It brings so much clarity and understanding to me being me and me accepting me. One of the reasons why I associate with the Great Mother Dragon. Why not only had it taken me so much time to face this energetic powerhouse <laughs> that comes to play with me in the non-physical realm. So intimidated. I mean, mainly... Because inside of social confinements, honey, yeah, the great mother dragon don't come the fuck around. And so a lot of people can't really deal with that because we still are engaging in this thing called political correctness. Whatever the fuck that means. <laughs> And toggling back and forth in contemplation where my inner voice is constantly saying, we came here to do some shit. We came here to face some shit. We came here to talk about some shit. Yes, we came here to hold and convene those tough conversations and make them comfy and make them inviting. Because why? Folks run away from that which they consider negative. Not realizing that you literally got to do the two of pentacles type of juggle with it like you have to have positive in one hand and negative in the other you have to be able to look both of them simultaneously and not fret neither one of them there is something that's called an addiction to positivity and it's not a good look why because something when something comes before you that you have to deal with that's anything other than positive you are not going to be equipped with the familiarity to slay so let's read this and I'm not sure if I may mention so the tenth house reputation is on page 84 and the eighth house intimacy is intimacy is on page 82 of the luminous astro deck guidebook so the eighth house invites us to fully invest in others with all of our body and soul. The place where our shadow parts like to hide out, it is here that we house our deepest, darkest secrets, our covert safety deposit box, and our underground door door. I don't know what that word is. I've never seen that word before. A boar door. B-O-U-D-O-I-R. It's vocabulary time. <laughs> Hold tight. Let me, let's get this situated. Let's see. Y'all know I'm going to write this word down, right? I'm such a lover of words. I've never seen this word before. Okay, so let's see. No. O-U-D-I-O-R. What is this? What does this mean? A woman's private sitting room or salon in a furnished accommodation, usually between the dining room and the bedroom. Well, let's, let's hear how it's pronounced. I wonder if I already know this word and just had never seen it in writing. Come on, give me a pronunciation. It's not gonna give me a pronunciation. Oh, there we go. Boudoir. A boudoir. <laughs> of course I've heard of that word before. <laughs> oh, never knew how to spell it. That is incredible. <laughs> okay, so a boudoir. Yeah, okay, I can dig it. <laughs> I'm still going to keep it as the word of the day. Okay, so. <laughs> Interesting. So, 
So where are we? Huh. Our covert safety deposit box and or underground boudoir. All who enter here must first prove themselves worthy of our naked pulsating heart. Interesting. <laughs> Ruler of emotional and financial investments, the house of inherited assets and pain. Nothing passing through here is to be taken lightly. A place for power plays and magnetic push pull energy of our sacred sexuality desire transmutes into transcendence in this house. Each orgasmic ego death, the yeah, each orgasmic ego death, the big bang before the next rebirth. Fascinating. <laughs> wow, okay. Planets positioned in the eighth house show the forces show the forces we are learning to let shape us in all their primitive intensity and that and that are lighting the pathway down into our private shadowlands. When our cravings for transparency becomes obsessive. The lesson is to accept what's on the surface without needing to incessantly dig down into the dirty depths. When this card is pulled, your bluff is being called. It's time to show your cards or strip off another layer and reveal what's underneath. The stakes may feel too high, but ultimately this call to a deeper level of vulnerability and intimacy shows you are ready to stop playing small. The opportunity, should you dare to accept it, is to feel like the winner who takes it all. As you prepare to bear, remember that beneath the layers of conditioning is where we connect with our unbreakable diamond core, the nucleus of our nature, and that nothing and no one can take what is essentially and eternally yours. The journal prompt is write down everything, facts and feelings about a situation you are currently obsessed with and burn the paper. And it's amazing because I know exactly what that is. Um, and I'm gonna also just make mention how divinely synchronized this is. And I can't remember right at the moment who hosted this reading, but it's been within the last day or two where, and if I can, if I can uh, locate it, I'll put the link inside of the description box where, oh, I do remember. Okay. I'm going to link it. And it is a Capricorn general reading. And the first card out, it was an Oracle card. The first card out said, take off your mask. And it made it so tender because I have been striving to break the links of me needing and feeling like I have to be politically correct all the fucking time. Like just drawing in on all of these seeds of insecurities around who gets called and what type of opportunities present themselves and 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 in what arenas will the invitations come from why because there's a certain kind of etiquette or behavioral templates that must be followed in order for certain folks to to have a seat at the table as if to say that if you do not and and, and, what, and what makes it so oxymoronish <laughs> is that the the on the surface is always like show up as yourself be yourself authentically you woo 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 but i really honestly believe that there are moments where folks are not ready for the dragon to be in the room and I say that literally and figuratively. 
And that's because everyone isn't doing self-check. Everyone isn't doing self-reflection. Everyone that, and when I say everyone, I honestly mean those by which livelihood takes place, by which the opportunities are being incubated and dispersed. Because as much as we really do like to say that we are in transition, the realness of what it takes to transcend, the realness of what it takes for the phoenix to ash out and emerge anew. Because if we be real about this thing, we aren't even given or allowing or holding safe space for folks to transform, for folks to deal with their shadows. We are not allowing, and when I say allowing, I mean just rendering respectful reciprocity that folks have to deal with their shadows and that's not going to always be a pretty thing. Yeah, she going to show up better. But immediately do you say, and I'm not really talking about me, I actually have a situation, yeah, that uh, with a very dear friend of mine who shows up in her authentic self. And it's not to say that she always show up better. Because from the moment I met her, even at work, she has one of the most contagious, bubbly spirits ever. But it always seemed like folks could not deal with her when she was opposite of that. And she had every right as a human being to be opposite of that. But when you're talking about office environment, like they, there is no space for you just to be you in certain times and moments. Okay, so there's a time and space for everything. And it gets quite complicated because if you are in a shadow mode, you can't necessarily call off. They don't have the shadow, uh, being inside of shadow mode is not one of the things that will clear leave. <laughs> so let's be real with this shit. Like for real, we if we are expecting folks to come out of the mentality of being a cog's wheel cog, like where is the safe space for these types of transitionings, these types of life altering Phoenix emerging modes to take place. But I do believe we are moving into that. I do believe that as each individual deals with the tipping of their own hourglass inside of their maturity continuations or their, their maturity continuums inside of their majestic meridians. Y'all know how I like to play with words. And trust me, it's not like a a singletary capability. You literally can get you a dictionary and dance as well. <laughs> so many people, they really would like for me to like simplify it. You got to simplify. No, you need to get you a dictionary. Like I'm I'm no longer going to like play these types of games. Like the, these words are open and available for anybody to engage them. And trust me when I say they love it when you come play. They like for you to come and seek them and say, well, what do you mean? Well, I don't even, I don't hear it enough. And I'm quite bummed out about that because there's so many definitions and powers of meaning and symbology all over the place. And somebody will say something and very rarely do I hear, tell me more. We've honestly gone into this text mode type of conversation uh, uh, medium where you say two, three words and you honestly expect me to understand fully what it is you're talking about. <laughs> Ain't getting ready to happen. It's not getting ready to happen. We are being challenged to express to the point where we are founding full comprehension around mature context that takes communication and that takes suspension of judgment 
and patience for things to unravel, unfold, unpack, process, and mature. <laughs> Straight like that. And I, the more and more I look at these two cards, the 10th house around reputation and the 8th house around in intimacy, in conjunction with the two planets that they are connected with, are the two planets that I spoke of with regards to me and my tender spaces and my bubble of vulnerability and I hadn't even read it yet so I know it's for me and I know that it was for me to discover in this moment while I was recording so that I could be completely transparent without giving any second thought so as well as this for me I'm wondering who else is going to bump into this where it's going to also be for you And finally, we can get to the point where energy can have its just due. I'm telling you, I'm being a rapper one day. I probably already am because I'm full of rhymes. <laughs> I'm full of divine confinement. <laughs> so I'm going to end it there. This is the conclusion of installment four and all around. Um, the series of keynotes to self, tipping of the hourglass. The hourglass is tipping. The hourglass is tipping. Stop being afraid of your shadows. Stop being afraid of those bits and pieces of yourself that folks are not ready for. Stop suppressing it or them. <laughs> they have and always will show up for a reason and it's not going to always be to make folk comfortable and because we live in this ultra positive world we always figure that everything and and everybody is always going to be at the forefront of comfortability no it's not some things are honestly going down so that some shit can get shaken up and can and yeah it can be reset the phoenix is in burning mode, but quickly thereafter, the phoenix shall emerge. So thanks for hanging out with me. It honestly has been a pleasure. I'm glad that I have reached the moment of completion as I dare greatly to speak my peace and whatever else come to fucking mind. <laughs> So until next time, oh, you know what? There is, there's going to be an immediate next time. Why? Because I said um, yesterday that I actually do have readings in Black Log. I'm no longer calling it Black Log. And I tried to correct myself yesterday, but it kept coming out Black Log. So I have readings in Q. And the, ne the very next up is my, I did a horoscope for generation X, Y, and Z. And I've been sitting on this one, contemplating and meditating, just making sure that any and everything that wanted me to speak about it had its chance to come to my forefront so that I could give it its spotlight. So I've been sitting on this dear, damn near 14 days. And so it feels like it's close to fruition. And so it will be manifesting soon. I believe that that will be the next time that you will hear from me. So, um, and, and I honestly believe that I'm saying it now so that I may hold myself accountable. Because um, one thing I'm noticing that even when I pull cards and inside my mind it says, okay, now record a reading around it. If I don't make mention of it in the public space, sometimes I will be, uh, uh, I will be um, tested to see if I actually follow through with it. In my honesty, there have been some uh, clusters of cards where I literally put it back in a deck like, ah, yeah, I don't feel like talking about that. And, and I think that that was to my disjustice um, because with every moment that I record my uh, contemplations around the cards that show themselves to me, the better I get within my practical modes of being a reader of the cards. Um, so yeah, I will um, 
call it a conclusion. And so once again, thanks for hanging with me and I wish you well.